Feel free to follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports, as well as the KSIR Sports Facebook page. And now batting for Weld Central will be the number two hitter, Vince Laconte. Very talented team. This team is 3-1. and one. Their lone loss to Eaton and the offering. And that's a changeup for a strike down the middle at the knees. No balls in one strike. Ryan Dunker, the number one pitcher for this team, undoubtedly, with all the experience he gained last season. The stretch and the offering. Swung on. Nope. Did he? T yeah, he did. He took a check swing. And it's a no balls and two strikes. Here to the number two hitter for Weld Central. Lacante digs in and the pitch. And that is a call strike three on a changeup on the outer half. And Ryan Dunker did his job there against Lacante. There's one down. By the way, the Bay Diggers in that first inning picked up a hit, the Caleb Cox double, down the right field line. And they stranded a runner. Here's Dawson Lang, the opposing pitcher, hitting for the left side. A Ryan Dunker. The Bee Diggers are looking for their first win of the year. Swung on. That ball is grounded right side of the first baseman. Woolrich steps to the back, throws to second. Safe. So it's three unassisted. Advancing to second is Hayes Edens. And there are two down. Two down here in the bottom of the first inning for Jimmy Lacante. A tremendous athlete hitting for the left side. Here's the stretch by Dunker and the pitch. And that changeup is down and in. One ball and no strikes. The Bay Diggers will play their first home game of the season coming up on Tuesday when they take on the Sterling Tigers. Wind appears to be dying down just a bit. And the offering swung on and lifted deep into the left center field gap. That ball's going to be trouble. Griffith is way back there. And that one is going to be... Let's see, was that caught out there? Yeah. Apparently it was caught. I just didn't even see it from here. The sun is glaring all over the place, but the caught it, play is caught. The ball is caught out there, and the inning is over. Yeah, who came up with that baseball? Brown and Griffith were converging. Nonetheless, Weld Central does not score in the first. They strand a runner. We head to the second inning. No score between the Bee Diggers and Rebels on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. All right, let's move to the second. John Beltran here from Weld Central High School in Keensburg. The Bee Diggers and Rebels are scoreless. And for Weld Central, Dawson Lang delivers to Colin Cole, who walked four times. He had four walks issued against Ken Denver in that 13-5 loss. The Bee Diggers opened up the season losing to Valley 11-7 on Tuesday, so their third game here in less than a week, and the offering, and that breaking ball is in the dirt to the screen. Defensively, Cody Baumgartner is behind the plate for Weld Central, Isaac McWilliams at first, Mark Berry at second, the third baseman is Vince Lacante, Jimmy Lacante at short, around the outfield, Hayes Edens in left, Andrew Youngers in center, Gavin Johans in right, and that's up and away, three balls and no strikes. We'll set the rest of the B-Digger starting lineup. We've seen Already, four hitters to the plate, and he takes that for a strike. Griffith, Cox, Wellen, and De Herrera, the first four. After Colin Cole, you've got Carson Rule, Ryan Dunker, Jade Queen, and Ben Brown. Three and one. Colin Cole awaits the pitch to lead off the second, and that's low and away. And that ball skips to the screen, and there's a lot of uh, room here between the catcher and the backstop. And Cole walks for the fifth consecutive time. Here over two games, here's Carson Rule. Rule has just three official at-bats this season. That's because he's been walked three times and hit by a pitch, hitting 333. Had the base hit against the Valley Vikings. So the Bee Diggers have the leadoff man here in the second on base. Yeah, I believe that ball, by the way, to end the bottom of the first inning, I completely lost it. The sun is right in our face. But I think it was caught over there by Griffith in the left center field gap. That's the way I saw it off the bat. And I've had to readjust the positioning here because of the wind, the stretch. And a pitch to Rule. Swung on. That ball is lifted foul and out of play off to the right. 
No balls and one strike to the junior, Carson Rule. On deck is Ryan Dunker. And that pitch is low and away. It is 2-0. Two balls and no strikes. On deck, it's once again Dunker. The pitch here coming to rule from Dawson Lang. And that's upstairs, and the count runs to 3-0. and oh. The B-Diggers got a base hit in the... Well, check that. Should be 2-1. and one. To Carson Rule. The B-Diggers had a double from Caleb Cox in the first inning. Swung on and driven foul down the right side. Now that levels the count of two and two. Yeah, next week the B-Diggers will play Sterling on Tuesday. And then the Eaton Reds on Thursday, both home games. And then they'll conclude March with a game against the Fort Morgan Mustangs on the 29th. That's a B106 and B106.com game. And then two weeks from today against Resurrection Christian on the road. The pitch swung on and lifted into the right center field gap. That one might find a hole. And that's actually going to be land right in front of the second baseman off the end of the bat. I'm telling you, the ball is not carrying at all here. Hit off the end of the bat, and the wind has just brought it back in. And that's going to drop for a hit. I mean, that ball is not carrying whatsoever. Well, that looked like he hit that baseball a lot better than it did. It just died out there. I mean, that completely fooled Mark Berry. He was going out, and it's almost like it was a life force with that baseball. And it drops for a hit. First and second, there's a strike to Ryan Dunker. Yeah, I mean, I'm, obviously you can tell I'm struggling to locate the baseball at times, and I think that was the case there with Barry. First and second, nobody out in the second. And a pitch swung on. That is chopped foul down the third base side. Yeah, for some reason I can see it better on the left side than the right side. And the count is at 0-2. No balls, two strikes. We're in the top of the second. Neither team scored in the first inning. With Jade Queen on deck. The runners take their leads with two strikes here in the first and down and away. And the count moves to one and two. Cole at second, rule at first. Second straight inning, the B-Diggers have had two on base but did not capitalize in the first inning. Lang comes to the stretch. Sizable lead at second for Cole, and that is inside on the off speed. And the count levels at two and two. Dunker, the seventh hitter in this B Digger lineup. Walt Central going for their fourth victory in five tries after a pretty good start for them so far. And they're offering down and away. And that runs full. Brush has been pretty proficient offensively in their first two games, scoring a total of 12 runs. Runners take their leads. It's a full count to Dunker, and he swings and pops it foul and out of play. Count remains at three and two. Yeah, so the wind definitely appears to be, at least from this vantage point, blowing in just based on that last at bat by rule. Payoff pitch. Swung on. That ball is grounded. Right up the middle, Lacante, the shortstop, has a play off his glove, but the second baseman, Barry, has it and steps on the bag for the force. Well, that'll go 6-4 to four on the force because it deflected off Lacante. And the runners are now at the corners. With one down here in the top of the second inning. Yeah, we've had all types of adventures here so far in this game. Just with the wind... So one down for Jade Queen. So Jade Queen stepping in. Followed by Ben Brown conversation on the hill. AC Ice proudly supports local high school sports throughout Northeast Colorado. When you need ice, don't just settle for any old frozen water. Get AC ice. So Jade Queen 
trying to deliver the first run for the Bee Diggers. Here in the top half of the second inning, no score. With runners at the corners for Brush. And I don't know why the delay here, unless we have something. Yeah, I, it looks like we're square. Nothing has changed, even though we've had a delay between hitters. Queen with an open stance for the right side, and he takes that pitch for a strike, the breaking ball in the outer half, and it's no balls and one strike. Dawson Lang looks in. Baumgartner lays down the sign. And the offering. Swag and a miss through it right by him. Same location. Put some heat behind that one. And it is 0-2 to Jade Queen. Very talented junior athlete for the Bee Diggers. They stranded a runner in the first. No balls, two strikes. Two on, one down in the top of the second. And the pitch from Lang. And that is right there on the outside corner. And he's got him looking, and there's two down. That was the same location Dunker had to... I believe it was Vince Lacante in the bottom of the first inning. That'll send up Ben Brown looking for his first hit of the season. Yeah, sometimes in an 0-2, you think a pitcher's just going to waste a pitch or throw it up in the zone or, or out of the zone, I should say. And throw back to first. And back in easily there is Ryan Dunker. So Brush knows they can capitalize on this pitcher. But they need to come through right now. The stretch and the offering. And that's a strike right there with a fastball in the outer half. No balls in one strike here to Ben Brown. Cole at third, Dunker at first. With two down at the top of the second inning. Cole walked to begin the frame. Baumgartner lays down the sign again. The stretch and the pitch swung on. That ball is grounded to third. Should be a routine play played off the glove of the third baseman. Throw to first. And that is going to be in time. Or no, he's late. Late that a run scores. Boy, that was a bang-bang play at first. But the air is committed over there by Vince Lacante. Scoring is Colin Cole and the Bee Diggers lead 1-0. So they catch a break there, and they certainly needed that one. And here's Justin Griffith, who reached on an air. That's the second air already for Weld Central, both on the left side of the infield. Bee Diggers had their issues defensively on Thursday. The pitch... Swung on, that ball is grounded left side. The first baseman has got it. Stepping in the bag and making the play is Isaac McWilliams, and that ends the inning, or at least the half inning there for the Bee Diggers. However, Brush does score a run, and they do it on one hit, one error, and two men left. To the bottom of the second we go in Keensburg. The score, Brush one, and Weld Central nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. All right, let's head to the bottom of the second inning. The Bee Diggers lead by a score of one to nothing over the Weld Central Rebels as they took advantage of an error on the third baseman, Lacante. And Ryan Dunker, who last year did have one complete game against the Yuma Indians. Certainly capable of doing that. Here against Weld Central. Although this team, like I said, very talented team with those three victories already. With their lone loss to the Eaton Reds. And that was a 16-5 loss that Fort Morgan dealt them. On Thursday in Eaton. All right, Mark Berry, Cody Baumgartner, and Isaac McWilliams will bat for Weld Central. Here's the wind and pitch. Swag, and I'm missing a changeup up in the zone. It's 0-1. And, boy, the wind is picking up the tarp there in center field. That's why we're trying to get out of it so it doesn't affect the broadcast, the offering. And that just missed the inside corner. Again, lots of changeups here 
thrown by Dunker. That's his repertoire, but it's helped him. He pitches to contact. Only eight pitches thrown in the opening inning. And the pitch down and in. Two balls and one strike. And that's a little bit low. Missed away as well. Three and one. First speed digger run of the game brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants providing civil engineering services. And that's up and away for aviation, municipal, commercial, and residential clients in Colorado invested and involved in the communities, communities they work in. Excuse me, Western Engineering Consultants. It's a walk to Barry. And that'll bring up Baumgartner. And Dunker's a control pitcher. I mean, this is not a guy who normally allows walks, the stretch, and the offering. And that is on the outer half for a strike. Bell tied, but that's the way he started. Mark Barry then threw four consecutive balls. Let's see if we can change that around. The B diggers at double play depth with a one nothing lead in the bottom of the second inning. And the pitch. That is right there, down the middle. No balls and two strikes. Dunker has found his groove here on these first two pitches to Cody Baumgartner, the catcher for Weld Central. 0 oh and 2. Dunker delivers, and that's up and in. Throw him a fastball there, one ball and two strikes. Try to get Baumgartner chasing. Off of first is Barry. Here is the stretch and the pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the right and out of play. And it remains. At 0 and 2. Let's check it 1 and 2. Digging in the right handed hitter, Baumgartner, and the offering. Swing and a miss on a ball up at the letters. Another change up, second strike out there for Dunker, and there's one down here at the bottom of the second inning. Second inning, that is for McWilliams. McWilliams, a left handed hitter. He diggers have seen that for the first three teams. They're not just a ton of righties. That ball hit McWilliams, I think, somewhere on the forearm. Second hit batsman already in the game from Dunker. And that'll bring up Andrew Younger. So first and second for the Rebels in the bottom of the second inning. And Younger's also a left-handed hitter. I mean, Ken Denver primarily went lefty-righty, lefty-righty, and Walt Central's not necessarily going in that same rotation, but they've got a nice mix here, the stretch. And Dunker comes home, and that's a changeup on the inside corner for a strike. No balls and one strike. The B-Digger scored their run on a two-out error in the top of the second inning. The runners take their leads, and squaring to bunt, and it's fouled. Fouled to the screen. It is 0-2. Here to Younger with Gavin Johan on deck. No balls and two strikes. The stretch. And the pitch. And that is just off the inside corner. Man, try to nail that corner and barely missed it is one and two to younger bottom of the second inning brush one weld central nothing the bee diggers threatened in each of the first two innings weld central had a base runner in the first and the offering swung on and fouled off to the left dunkers being worked a little bit more in this inning through just eight pitches in the opening frame but 15 so far in the second and has recorded just one out One ball, two strikes. Dunker looks back. Big lead at second. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, hit the outside corner to the left-handed hitter, Younger. And he took a wave at it and was way out in front. Strikeout number three for Ryan Dunker. I got to look back at that game against Yuma last year when he went the distance. That was an 8-5 to victory. But 
I think Dunker might have had only like one strikeout in that game. But here, he's baffling these Rebels, and that is a fastball a little bit high to Gavin Johan, the number nine hitter, right-handed hitter for Weld Central. At second is Mark Berry, Isaac McWilliams at first, with two down and two on in the second, and the pitch. Swag, and a miss, took a big hack at that, and the count is level at one and one. Rush has had some long games to begin the season, both approaching two and a half hours. They want to shorten it. I think it's more their type of baseball. The pitch swung on and fouled. Looked like he might have thrown him a breaking ball there. It is one and two to Gavin Johan, the number nine hitter. A walk and a hit batsman have placed these two Rebels on the base pass. One ball and two strikes. Laying down the sign is Cole. Dunker comes home. And that is a called strike three on the outside corner. Delivered some heat there, and Johan has struck out looking. In fact, Dunker struck out the side in the second. Weld Central strands two. Let's go to the third. The Bee Diggers one, and the Rebels nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the top of the third inning, where Brush leads Weld Central in Keensburg by a score of one to nothing. Caleb Cox will step in for the bee diggers. He doubled down the right field line, and Brush was going to be in a great situation at second and third, but Cox overran second, and then Griffith was caught in a rundown, and he was tagged out, and the breaking ball's in there for a strike from the right hander Dawson Lang, who just delivered his 30th pitch. The senior second baseman awaits. Fastball is upstairs. That levels the count at one and one. The B Diggers have the only two hits of the game. Wind and pitch. Curveball is down and away. That moves the count to two and one. Two balls and one strike here to Caleb Cox and the pitch. Swung on. That ball is grounded right side beyond the diving first baseman and to right field for a base hit. McWilliams though, but could not get to it. And Caleb Cox is now two for two. And he's off to a good start this season. Had that big double against Valley driving in two runs on Tuesday. And now Nick Wellen, who grounded a short, now steps in for Brush. The stretch and the pitch swung on and driven deep into left field, coming on and to his right, making the catch as Edens on the run as that ball was twisting to his right. There's one down. That ball was hit hard by Wellen, but a nice defensive play. Back to first Cox, and here's Isaac De Herrera. De Herrera. Also lined to left. Fell back to first, and Cox is back in. One out, one on. And the pitch. And that fastball just missed. And it's one ball and no strikes. Here to De Herrera in the third, one nothing brush. Swung on, that ball is grounded right side towards the second baseman. Barry throws to second for one. No throw to first. Are they gonna say that throw is offline? <laughs> well, that's gonna be scored another error. The throw is apparently offline. Leconte was off the bag. Jeez. Well, now brush has gotta take advantage here. Rush has got to take advantage of these miscues. Nice job of Cox getting down there, but a good throw gets him. And the throw up here, again, we're at a different angle here. Tough to see. Never even saw the safe call, but Cox is in there. Third air by Walt Central. And here is Cole, who walked for the fifth consecutive time. And the pitch. And that is a strike. Took something off it on the outer half of the knees. It's 0-1. 
Yeah, Weld Central has made three miscues already in this game. And stepping off is Lang. Cox at second, De Herrera at first. One out here in the top of the third. And the bead diggers are holding a one-nothing advantage. Pitch to Cole. Swung on that ball is grounded towards Lacante at short. Flips to second for one and buried to first. And that is a 6-4-3 double play. And the bead diggers are done here in the top of the third inning. No runs for Brush. On one hit, no errors and a man left. We head to the bottom of the third. It's Brush 1. Weld Central nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran back in Keensburg, where Brush leads Weld Central by a score of one to nothing here in the bottom of the third inning. And Ryan Dunker's been really effective in this game. As he struck out the side in the second inning. But he will face the top of the order now. Hayes Edens, Vince Lacante, and Dawson Lang. Here for Walt Central. Edens was hit by a pitch but stranded at second. Wine and offering. Swung on that ball, is fisted on the ground towards the shortstop well, and he's got it. Fires to first, and there's one down as Edens is retired. And Dunker has yet to allow a hit either. So despite the couple of hit batsmen and a walk, again, pitching to contact, that's his specialty. That'll bring up Vince Laconte. He struck out looking in his first plate appearance. Swung on and fisted foul and off to the right. No balls and one strike. Here to the third baseman for Weld Central. Dunker delivers. And that is upstairs with a heater. And the count levels at one and one. Rush scored their lone run in the top of the second inning. Out of the windup, the pitch. And that just missed the inside corner on the changeup. Two balls and one strike. Dunkerstone, 32 pitches so far, 19 for strikes and 13 balls. Colin Cole lays down the sign. Dunker turns and fires. Swung on. That ball's grounded left side. The shortstop, Wellen, has got it deep. And he throws to first, and that's in time. Oh, that ball looked like uh, De Herrera was going to be able to cut that off, but Wellen, fairly deep in the hole, was able to throw a laser to first. And there's two down, and that's some confidence for Wellen, who struggled defensively against Ken Denver, but has handled those two beautifully here in the third. And that'll bring up Dawson Lang. Lang grounded to first in his first plate appearance. Dunker kicks and fires. Swung on and fouled off to the left. No balls in one strike. Cargill Meat Solutions committed to feeding the world in a responsible way by reducing environmental impact and improving products and processes. Learn about Cargill's story of commitment at Cargill.com. Change up is upstairs. One ball and one strike. With the bases empty in the bottom of the third inning. Brush leading Weld Central 1-0 on a cool, windy Saturday morning here in Keensburg, Colorado. And the pitch. That's up and away again. Two balls and one strike. If Lang reaches, Jimmy Lacante, a tremendous athlete, will hit for Weld Central in this frame. But Ryan Dunker, two and two-thirds innings so far. No-hit baseball. And the pitch swung on and lifted down the left field line. That's going to be trouble if it stays fair along the line. And that ball is just foul. Twisted foul. Long run there for Ben Brown, who's playing into that left center field gap. Yeah, certainly we had some issues on uh, Thursday with the, uh, with the stream. Apologize for those, but we're back up and running during that game. And, of course, right here as well. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bottom three, the base is empty. The bead diggers lead by a run over the Rebels of Weld Central. This will be their only meeting of the season. Last year was an extra inning game won by Weld Central 6-5 in brush. And that pitch is up and away. 
with a changeup. The count has gone full at three and two here to Dawson Lang. Very special St. Patrick's Day, but I've got birthdays to talk about later as well. And that is a changeup that just missed. And Dunker walks Dawson Lang. And that'll bring up Lacante here, the Weld Central shortstop. And looks like there's a courtesy runner out there for the pitcher. Not sure who's out there, but nonetheless, Lacante at 0 for 1 will now hit. And again, the wind is certainly playing a factor with the flight of the baseball. We're out of it right now. He just cuts off the angle from the broadcast, and that is just missed. I don't know where he missed that pitch. It looked like it caught the corner, but apparently it was a tad inside here to Lacante. One ball and no strikes on the changeup. Lacante, the cleanup hitter in this Weld Central lineup. Dunker delivers. Swung on that ball's fisted foul down the right side towards the digger dugout. And the count is level at one ball and one strike. Here to Jimmy Lacante. Short lead at first. And the pitch. Swung on and fisted foul again up the right side. Ball one, strike two. Ryan Dunker had a strikeout in the first and then struck out the side in the second. The stretch and the offering. Swung on that ball is grounded. Off to uh, the first baseman, Bryson Woolridge. What a dive to make that play. That ball was headed for right field. He laid out to his right. And Woolridge makes an outstanding play. Steps on the bag for the out. Man, that was ticketed for right field. And I couldn't see the ball went into Woolridge's glove because he was basically... <laughs> he was tumbling all over the ground. But once he got to his feet, he made the play. And the inning is over. All right, Weld Central, no runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. Let's head to the fourth. It's brush one, Weld Central nothing on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. We start the top of the fourth. The first pitch to Carson rules a strike. Bryson Wooldridge just made a tremendous play at first and a ground ball headed for right field, preserving the no-hitter from Ryan Dunker and the offering. Swag and a miss and a pitch down and away. It's 0-2. Roy's first time up. Got a base hit. His second of the season. And Dawson Lang, the righty, fires. Swung on and chopped right over the mound. And the pitcher, Dawson Lang, fires to first for the out. He was able to leap and prevent that ball from going towards the shortstop, Lacante. One down here for Ryan Dunker. Very special happy birthday today to my beautiful sister-in-law, Gloria, celebrating a birthday on St. Patrick's Day. So that's a double celebration. Wine and pitch, and the breaking ball is in the dirt. Yeah, so while we're in the cool weather here in Colorado, the fun and sun in Miami is where Gloria's at, hopefully having a great time today. So happy birthday, Gloria, from not only myself, but uh, the entire Beltran family here in Colorado. Outside with that pitch, two balls and no strikes. On deck is Jade Queen. Dunker hit into a fielder's choice his first time. Swung on and lifted foul and out of play. And a count is at two balls and one strike with Jade Queen once again waiting to hit next. 44 pitches thrown by Lang. 27 strikes and 17 balls. Here's the wine in the offering. And that's up and away. Yeah, I've been calling brush games for 20 years. This is probably the most odd position right here behind small building here. Swung on, grounded up the middle. Lacante, the shortstop, has got it. He fires to first for the out, right in front of the second base bag. So some of the angles, you can tell by the way I'm calling this game, might uh, are throwing me off a bit. And some balls I'm not seeing as clearly off the bat as others, only because again of the angle that we're at, but it's all to prevent the wind from getting right on top of us. It's 
It's a lot fierce, uh, fiercer in other areas, but we've got it shielded off here for the quality of the broadcast. Jade Queen struck out looking. Swang and a miss. Took a big hack at that one. It's 0 1. The B Diggers lead. The Rebels by a score of 1 0. Here's the wind and pitch. Swung on ground ball. Fouled off to the right. And the count is at 0 2. Brush Grocery Card, another fine sponsor of Brush B Digger Athletics. They've got it all there at Brush Grocery Card. Tremendous food, gas, and so much more at the Brush Grocery Card. And the 0 2 pitch, and that is barely off the plate on that fastball to Queen. It is 1 and 2 to the junior. The story of this game so far has been Ryan Dunker has not allowed a hit through three. And the offering. Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. And Baumgartner trying to locate it. And they'll throw to first high. And that ball is down the right field line. Queen is around first. And he's headed for second with no throw to go as a strikeout. And an error on the catcher, Baumgartner. So, Brush does have a shot here. In this frame, Weld Central has committed a bevy of errors. I thought I had that as their fourth, but I'm showing here number three. Nonetheless, we'll just keep it at three for now. Here's Ben Brown. He did reach on an error by the third baseman, Lacante, and that allowed the run to score. The lone run in this game. The number nine hitter with an open stance. Away is the pitch from Lang. Swing and a foul. So that was an unearned run that Lang allowed in the second. If the B-Digger score here, that would be unearned as well because the error came with two down. And it was off a strikeout. No balls in one strike. Swing and a miss. Boy, tied him up big time. Ben is taking some big, big swings. I think he's got to shorten it up. I know he's got to be a little bit frustrated here. Off to a slow start this season. He led the team in hitting for much of... 2017. Swing and a miss and a fastball that was way above the letters and Ben Brown strikes out on three pitches. No runs. No hits. One error and a man left in scoring position. Three and a half complete in Keensburg. It continues to be a one nothing Brush lead over Weld Central on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com I'm John Beltran as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. And Brush leads Weld Central by a score of one to nothing. And that pitch is in the dirt. Here to the number five hitter, Mark Berry. And the offering. That's in the dirt again. And Ryan Dunker has been very good in this game. I should say good, because I think he can pitch better. And the reason I say that is because he's walked two and hit a batter. We'll still say very good, but not flawless. Let's put it that way. Two balls and no strikes. And the pitch. All right, that's a nice one right there with that changeup. Right at the letters. It's two and one. Ryan Dunker delivers. Swung on, lined, base hit into the right center field gap. That ball is going to roll for a while. It's going to be cut off over there by the right fielder. Rule fires back to the infield, but that's a leadoff double in the bottom of the fourth inning for Mark Berry and the first hit of the game for Weld Central. So the tying run is on for Cody Baumgartner. All right, let's see what Dunker can do with a man at second and nobody out. The pitch, and that's in a dirt, but blocked beautifully there by Cole. One ball and no strikes here to Baumgartner, who struck out swinging his first time up. That's good news there for Dunker if he can do it again. Barry leads off of second, the pitch. Swung on that is fisted foul down the third baseline. And the count is at one and one. 
One ball and one strike here to Baumgartner with McWilliams waiting to hit next. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Rush leads one to nothing. And they scored that run on a Weld Central error. They do have three hits in the game. The pitch up and away with a fastball. It's two and one. B Diggers have stranded five so far. Weld Central's left four on the base pass. Two balls, one strike. Dunker looks back. Barry's got a sizable lead at second. And the pitch. And that's upstairs again. Three and one. I mean, he's got a base open, but now you're inviting some trouble. The one thing that Dunker does not have that he usually does have is a good strike to ball ratio. 28 strikes, 23 balls. Normally there's more of a separation the pitch. Swung on that ball is chopped to the shortstop well and has it on the second hop. Throws to first for the out, but advancing to third is Barry, and there's one down here in the fourth. Now let's see how Coach Fergus plays this infield. Is he going to play it in, considering that runs are at a premium at this in this game? McWilliams was hit by a pitch. Well, the infield is going to play back up the middle. In at the corner is the pitch, and that's a changeup for a strike. Dunker would love to induce some infield pop-up, which that changeup is prone to do, and hitters are out in front. The stretch and the offering, and that is just a tad high. Same pitch, but a little bit above the previous location, and the count is at one and one. Not a issue right now is the pitch count for Dunker 54 so far the offering swung on and fouled to the screen he jammed him with that one ball one strike two when the bottom of the fourth inning the B diggers lead the Weld Central Rebels by a score of one nothing off of third is Barry the stretch and the pitch swung on and fouled again right to the screen So it remains at one and two here to Isaac McWilliams, a left-handed hitter for Weld Central. Barry doubled the lead off the fourth. Cole setting up on the outside corner of the pitch. Swing and a miss, and McWilliams strikes out. He got him on the corner. Fifth strikeout for Dunker, and more importantly, two down here in the bottom of the fourth. And Ryan Dunker knows how to pull that string with anybody. Andrew Younger struck out his first time up. He's also a left-handed hitter. But he's up there now with two down. The offering way outside with a changeup. One ball and no strikes. Here to Younger. Dunker. Delivers. Swung on that ball is grounded down the third base side. And that is going to be... A fair ball. And he's going to be into second with a double just inside the line there. Man, that just barely clipped the inside. And Younger's got a two-out double scoring Barry, and the game is tied at one. Oh, man. I mean, boy, that was a, certainly a, a ball that looked like it was going to be twisting foul, but it stayed fair. And that was like a half swing. That's what you got to do against Dunker. You take a big swing, and that's a strike. I mean, it looked like a three-quarter swing. He just guided the ball, and nothing the B-Diggers could do defensively there. And it's a straight-up double there for Younger, the second double of the inning. And the pitch swung on and popped up on the right side. The second baseman, Caleb Cox, to his left. As that ball is just twisting away from him with this wind, but he makes the grab. And that does it for Weld Central in the fourth inning. However, they tie the game on two hits. No errors and a man left. We head to the fifth inning in Keensburg. Brush one. Weld Central one on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. All right, let's head to the fifth inning. The Bee Diggers and Weld Central Rebels deadlocked at one. Here in Keensburg, Andrew Younger just delivered a two-out double, scoring Mark Berry. Brush will have to counter now with Justin Griffith, Caleb Cox, and Nick Wellen, top of the order. Griffith is 0 for 2. 
Reached on an air and grounded out. And the pitch swung on and driven in the air into deep right field. But that ball is going to come down into the glove of Gavin Johan. Again, the wind is just taking it down. And when the ball looks like it's going to be flying towards the fence, it just, uh, it just drops. So the catch is made for the opening out here in the top of the fifth inning. Here's Caleb Cox, who's had a very good game offensively. A double and a single. He has two, a brush is three hits. Wind and pitch, and the breaking ball is over, but low. One ball and no strikes. And Cox awaits. Swung on, that ball is chopped on the ground to the first baseman, Isaac McWilliams, who steps on the bag. Hit hard, but McWilliams was right there on that second bounce, and he was able to field it for the out. And just like that, Nick Wellen will hit. <coughs> With two down. Coach Fergus having a conversation with Wellen. I wonder if he wants him to work the count a little bit. As Dawson Lang has been on that mound now here for about a minute and a half. And that doesn't count the warm-up, so they could be back into that dugout pretty quickly. He's only thrown 56 pitches. So the starters have been very effective in this game. Pitch to Wellen. And that is a fastball up and away. One ball and no strikes. Nick grounded a short and line to left. So he's 0 for 2. Wine and offering. Swung on and popped up. The third baseman, Lacante, calling for the baseball. And to his left makes the catch. And on just five pitches, the B-Diggers are done in the fifth inning. We head to the bottom of the fifth with the score. Brush 1. Weld Central 1 on 1010KSIR in KSIR.com. John Beltran back in Keensburg, brush one, Weld Central one. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Jade Queen will be the new pitcher. Ryan Dunker moves to first. It'll be the one, two, and three hitters, just like the B-Diggers had in the top half of this frame. Hayes Edens, Vince Lacante, and Dawson Lang for Weld Central. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, for the Rebels, who just tied the game half an inning ago, or actually one inning ago, on the two-out double from Andrew Younger. On the St. Patrick's Day, a happy birthday to my good friend Pat Mendoza. Pat, I hope you have an awesome celebration. I know you have some big plans. And it's going to be a wonderful day for you, Pat. So we love you. Have a great happy birthday. And uh, I'm sure I'll be celebrating. What, what, what is the term they use? Uh, maybe vicariously or in spirit. One of those two. Here on this Saturday, March 17th. All right, so we begin the bottom of the fifth inning here with Hayes Edens hit by a pitch and grounded out. 0 for 1 officially. As we're here in the fifth, bottom five tied at one. Let's see, they closed the book on Dunker. Boy, Ryan pitched well. And I don't know if that was the uh, if that was the strategy all along and a swing and a miss. Well, you can hear the glove pop there. Jade Queen is, <laughs> excuse me, bringing something. You can tell I'm not 100% healthy even when I try to laugh. Uh, some of these things come out. Swung on and popped up. The shortstop Wellen is ranging out into shallow left center field. He makes the two-handed grab for the out. And there's one down as Edens is retired. <laughs> and that'll bring up Vince Lacante, who struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. Lacante did commit the error that allowed the run to score for. Here's the wind and the pitch. Swung on and lifted into center field. Justin Griffith is right there. He makes the catch. All right, and I think what I've got. Yep, I think Lacante. I think I've got Lacante and Barry in terms of positioning mixed up. So I think Barry's at third. Let's correct that. He 
Yep, I think yeah, Barry is the third baseman. Leconte at second, so two down. Yeah, we had a mix-up there in the lineup. And pitch got away, nailed the umpire there, so be one ball and no strikes to Dawson Lang, grounded out and walked. So, yeah, it was Barry's error. And, yeah, home plate umpire walking around was uh, was pegged on that pitch. And he, and it's not exactly 75 degrees. It's not too cold out here, but that stings a little bit more. When it's uh, when you've got some temperature to add to it. Two down and the base is empty in the bottom of the fifth inning. The B Digger scored their run on Barry's air in the second, and Walt Central scored their run on a two out double by Andrew Younger in the fourth. So Lang with a one ball, no strike count. All right, we'll get to Dunker's line here in a second and the pitch. Ooh, that ball nearly hit him. Fastball down and in. Two balls and no strikes. For Ryan Dunker, the senior went four innings, 61 pitches. And the pitch. Fastball is high, 3-0. and oh. He allowed just one hit. Walked two, hit two batters, and struck out five, including the side in the second. 3-0. Up and away with a fastball. And after throwing three pitches, I believe it was, to record a couple of outs, now a four-pitch walk. So here's Jimmy Lacante, certainly a threat here. He's popped up and uh, grounded out. He's 0 for 2. With Mark Berry waiting to hit next. Yeah, this is the guy you got to get. That's why he's in a four-hole, and that's why when you walk... A hitter to set it up its danger zone, and the fastball is down and in. One ball and no strikes. Jade Queen has got a nice, strong, live arm. If he locates like he did to the first two hitters, he'll attain the success. But boy, he is missing badly. That one is up and away. Six consecutive balls thrown by the junior, Jade Queen. It's two balls and no strikes. And that's one of the questions going into this year, graduating three starting pitches, pitchers, excuse me, and the offering. Swung on, that ball is drilled into deep right field, way back is Rule, and that ball's off the bottom of the fence. It's chased down by Rule. Around third is Dawson Lang. He's going to be sent home. Jimmy Lacante has got an RBI triple, and it's a 2-1 to one lead for the Weld Central Rebels in the bottom of the fifth inning. And just like that, Weld Central has taken the lead, and that's what happens, you know, when you have the opposing team's best player up there in an RBI situation. And he came through the pitch way outside to the screen of the wild pitch. Here comes Lacante, and it's 3-1. to one. And Barry's already delivered with a walk and a double. And he was able to score there in that fourth inning. So Weld Central now with a 3-1 to one lead. And this all happened with two down, a walk. The triple by Lacante into the right center field gap. And then the wild pitch. And Coach Fergus is out to the mound. That's why that third out of an inning can be extremely difficult sometimes. You get the first two hitters. You induce a couple of pop-ups, and then all of a sudden you lose control with six consecutive balls. But Queen is he's just gaining experience out there. I mean, this is not a veteran pitcher in terms of varsity action, so you got to go through, through some growing pain sometimes. All right, so Mark Berry steps in with a ball and no strikes after the wild pitch scoring Lacante. Laying down the sign is Colin Cole. The wine and the offering. Yeah, that ball nearly hit him. 2-0. Queen has thrown 12 pitches, only four in the strike zone. But with two of those, he recorded outs. And Jade Queen delivers. Down and away. Again, off the glove of Cole. It's 
3-0. and I'm sure Coach Fergus does not want to bring in a fresh pitcher just to get the third out of this inning. The B-Diggers, after now allowing two runs, are down to their final six outs, trailing by only two. There's the wind and pitch. Whew, extremely high. Cole had to stand up to catch that one. It's another walk. And here is Cody Baumgartner who has struck out swinging and grounded out. All right, let's see if Jay can retire him. With two down in the bottom of the fifth inning, you root for a guy like this because, well, first of all, he's a bead digger, and second of all, you don't want to see him struggle in his first outing of the season, the pitch. And that is upstairs. Took something off, and it's 1-0. 49 degrees here in Kingsburg, a sunny, windy Saturday. Off of first is Barry. And the off swing and a miss of three. And it's one and one. One ball, one strike to Cody Baumgartner with two down in the fifth inning. And a pitch. And that's a strike right there. Count moves to one and two. All right, one more, Jade, and you get out of this, and and you set up your team for a shot in the sixth and seventh. The pitch. Swung on, and the ball is driven in the air down the left field line. A long run for Brown in foul territory, and he won't get there. Also giving Chase D. Herrera. Huge amount of foul territory here in Kingsburg. One ball and two strikes. The B-Diggers had significant issues defensively against Ken Denver but have not committed an error in this game. So the defense has held up very nicely. Queen delivers the one-two. Swing and a miss, he tied him up. And it's a strike out of Cody Baumgartner for Jade Queen. However, Weld Central takes the lead. They get a go-ahead RBI triple from Jimmy LaConte. Two runs on one hit, no errors and a man left. Let's head to the sixth inning with the score. Weld Central three, brush one. We're back in one minute. On 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Isaac D. Herrera will lead off for Brush in the sixth inning. And Dawson Lang, who's thrown just 58 pitches, is looking for the complete game, but he's got to get through this inning and another against the B Digger lineup that has been pretty productive the first two games. They've got three hits today two from Caleb Cox and one from Carson Rule. But D. Herrera was not retired against Valley. And now looking to reestablish what he did in the first game here. In this game, he lined to left and then hit into a fielder's choice. Well, Central does have three miscues, although there's probably a fourth in there that I missed. Nonetheless, it really doesn't matter right now. The errors don't matter if you have the lead, which Weld Central does have right now. In fact, if they didn't have that first error, they'd be up three to nothing. Here's De Herrera. Here's the wind and pitch, and the breaking ball is in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Here to De Herrera, the number four hitter in this lineup. And Brush will be utilizing a lot of their younger players. Swung on, that ball is laced foul off to the right and out of play. While some of their players are gone for a couple of weeks. So they'll miss the next four games, Sterling, Eaton, Fort Morgan and Resurrection Christian, they'll be back for the games in April. And that's why today's game is, is pretty critical. Because not only are you missing some key players coming up, which really is the infield that we're talking about, the majority of it being the infield of pitch. Swung on and that ball is lifted into left center field and converging on the baseball and making the catch. In left center is Andrew Younger for the first out. And there's one down in the sixth inning. Yeah, because if you lose this game, and then with that competition, and knowing you've got a few starters out, ooh, we could be looking at a, a record that the B-Diggers do not want to face themselves with. The pitch, and that is a strike. Down the middle at the knees to Colin Cole. Cole walked and grounded a short. 
Although his on-base percentage this year is fantastic. And the offering. And that curveball's on the inside corner for a strike. Remember, Cole reached base five consecutive times. He was one for three against Valley. No official at-bats, but four walks against Ken Denver. The offering swung on. That ball is grounded sharply to second. Stabbed by LeConte. Throw to first. And out is Colin Cole on the two-hopper to Vince LeConte. All right, two down here in the sixth inning. The B-Diggers are aggressive up there, but unable to find these holes. Carson Rule had that infield hit and then grounded back to the mound. Unusual that he's a right-handed hitter and he throws with the left hand. That is swung on and fouled off to the right. Yeah, when you look at, uh, let me see, I don't think the B-Diggers have struck out much in this game at all. Dawson Lang has recorded just three strikeouts. And the 0-1 offering. Curveball is grounded to the shortstop. Jimmy LeConte, and it's off his glove. And that'll be another error on Jimmy LeConte. Normally a slick fielding shortstop, but that unofficially will be the fourth error of the game for Weld Central. His second, and the inning continues. Yeah, Jimmy LeConte, I've seen him before, not only against Brush, but against Fort Morgan because they play in that same Colorado 7, and he's been very good, but in this game, he's really scuffled. And that fastball is down and away to Ryan Dunker. Dunker's hit the ball up the middle twice on the ground. He's 0 for 2. Fielder's choice and a ground out. The stretch and the pitch, and that fastball's a strike on the outer half of the zone at the knees, and it's 1-1. One and one. One ball and one strikes. Find out why Morgan Community College is the best choice for your higher education. Visit MCC online at morgancc.edu. Curveball is inside. Two balls and one strike here to Ryan Dunker. Critical moment in the game. The B-Diggers trail three to one. Top of the sixth inning with two down and the tying run at the plate. Dunker did have a bases clearing triple against Valley. The pitch swung on and that is laced into the right center field gap. A long run coming into his right. And is the ball caught out there? No, it just drops right in front of the right fielder, Johan, and chased down there by Younger. And the third is going to be Carson Rule. As again, you know, both outfields are having challenges with the wind, as you can tell I am with the call of that particular ball as well. Hard to see here. And it's first and third. Here's Jade Queen. So the B-Diggers pick up their fourth hit. Dunker with a single, but a nice job of Rule advancing an extra base. Queen has struck out twice the pitch. And that is off the glove. And here, breaking to the plate and sliding in safely is Rule. The ball gets away in the infield. Dunker's headed for third. No throw. That'll be a wild pitch in the B-Diggers. Archer within a run. So Queen crosses home plate and Dunker gets to third. Well, and that, that'll be scored another error there on Baumgartner because that ball did get away on the throw towards the plate, allowing Dunker to advance a bag. So second error of the inning. Now I'm telling you, the B-Diggers are getting some breaks here, and, and at least they capitalize so far the pitch. Swing and a miss on a pitch down and away on the fastball to Queen, and the count is at one and one. One ball and one strike with two down. A run across for Brush in the top of the sixth inning, trailing three to two. The pitch. Fastball, a strike at the knees. That nailed the outside corner. Ball one, strike two. Off of third is Dunker, the stretch. Lang delivers. And the curveball is high. That was a slow curve. It just hung up there but it did not descend into the strike zone. Two and two. The equalizer is 90 feet away. And the long pause. Throw to third, back in diving is Dunker. Well, I mean, that's usually an ill-advised throw. I mean, the chances of getting him 
are not as good as the chances of throwing it away. And if you get the hitter, that doesn't matter. Jade Queen awaits the pitch. Here it is. That is just outside. And did Queen walk? Queen's headed to first. That should be three and two. Yeah, Queen lost track of the count. Yeah, he, he threw the bat and was headed to first, but it's only three and two. And now he's retrieving his bat and coming back towards the field of play. Three balls and two strikes. And Dawson Lang will deliver his 76 pitch. The stretch. Here it is. Swung on and chopped right back to the mound. And Lang throws to first, and that does it. As Jade Queen is retired to end the top of the sixth inning. The B Diggers do score a run. They inch a little bit closer on one hit. Two errors and a man left. Five and a half complete. The score. Weld Central three, brush two on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. I'm John Beltran as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Weld Central leads brush three to two. The B Diggers just scored a run on a wild pitch plate in Carson Rule. High Plains Bank and Wiggins offers a wide variety of products that can be customized to fit your individual needs. See what over a century of customer service can do for you at High Plains Bank and Wiggins. And whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, early Toyota Easton Ford Morgan will fit you into the car truck of your choice on any day or a windy day like this early Toyota East. I'm literally huddled behind a building here to cut off all the wind that would envelop the microphone. Here's the wine and pitch swung on and that's chopped up the right side and that's going to stay fair and it's barehanded by the pitcher queen to the first baseman dunker and there's one down. As Mark Berry is retired Here in the bottom of the six, was that bad? Oh, that, that was a pitch hitter, actually. That was somebody hit for McWilliams. Nonetheless, yeah, they threw in another hitter in there. One down, and the pitch. Swung on, that ball is grounded to the second baseman, Caleb Cox. He settles into the baseball, throws to first for the out. And there's two down, just like that. As Andrew Younger is retired by Cox. Two down here for Gavin Johan, who struck out and popped out. He's 0 for 2. And Jade Queen comes home. Curveball is a strike. This is the same way the fifth inning started for Queen. He retired two hitters very quickly and then scuffled with a walk, a triple, and a wild pitch, plating two runs. Wind and offering. Swung on. That ball is drifted foul off to the right. And it's 0 and 2. The Bee Diggers will have a few days off before their next game, actually just two, on Tuesday against Sterling. And the pitch bounces in. We wish all the Bee Digger players that will be traveling to Europe a safe journey. They'll be leaving tomorrow, and they'll be back for the rest of the season once we get into the April schedule. Here's the wine and pitch. Breaking ball is in the dirt. Count moves to two and two. Here to the number nine hitter, Gavin Johan. Wine and offering. Oh, he bounced that one in. I think Jade wants that third out so desperately. He's rushing himself a bit there. Landscaping the mound with his right foot. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, and the base is empty here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's the wine and the pitch. And that's way outside, not even close with the last three. So again, it's a two-out walk, very similar to the fifth inning, but got to get out of this one. Hayes Edens was hit by a pitch, grounded a short, and popped a short. 0 for 2. It's Hayes Edens. The stretch by Queen. And the offering. And that curveball is high. It is 1-0. It is a quick moving ball game here. We played just a little bit under an hour and a half and we're in the bottom of the sixth inning in the pitch. Way outside. Whew. 
Yeah, it's got to be in Queen's head now. It has to be because this is very, very similar. It's almost a replica of what happened one inning ago when he was just throwing BBs in a strike zone, induced a couple of outs, but was unable to get the third out without allowing two runs. He can't allow anything here with the bee diggers down by a run in the bottom of the sixth inning and two balls and no strikes to the number one hitter in the lineup, Hayes Edens. And the pitch swung on and driven in the air into deep left field, but... Ben Brown has room with a wind knocking the ball down, shy of the track. He makes the catch, and that ends the bottom of the sixth inning. That ball was hit very well, but again, thanks to Mother Nature, the bead diggers do not allow a run there. If not, on another day, it might have been perhaps even a two-run homer. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. We head to the seventh. Weld Central three, brush two on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Diggers have one more shot as we head to the seventh, trailing Weld Central three to two. And we will have a pinch hitter for Brush here. It'll be Gunnar Guzman hitting in Ben Brown's spot to lead off the seventh against the right-hander Dawson Lang trying to go the distance and that is a ball took something off it down and away one ball and no strikes to the senior Gunnar Guzman he was 0 for 2 on Thursday swung on and lifted into shallow center field that one's a long run but it's gonna be caught by Younger the ball hung up just long enough for Younger to make the catch and there's one down And he might have got it a little bit off the end of the bat. The tad. One out in the seventh for Justin Griffith. Griffith is 0 for 3. Here's the wine and pitch. That's a strike with a breaking ball. It's 0 and 1. No balls and one strike. One out and the base is empty in the seventh. Weld Central leads three to two. And the offering. And it took something off it for a strike on the outside corner. Belt high. No balls and two strikes. The bead diggers are out hitting Weld Central four to three. They've committed no errors and Weld Central's made five. But they still trail. Curveball is driven foul off to the left. Count remains at 0-2 here to Justin Griffith. Here in the seventh inning, the wind by Lang, the pitch, swung on and fouled again off to the left. Nice job of slapping that ball away by Justin Griffith. Stays at 0-2. Hitting with an open stance from the left side. And Dawson Lang comes home, and that's in the dirt with a breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. The B Digger scored a run in the second, one in the sixth. Weld Central with a run in the fourth and two in the fifth. The pitch swung on, lined up the middle for a base hit into center field. And Griffith is now one for four. And the ball is misplayed out in center. Griffith the second, and he's in there. That'll be an error on Younger, a base hit and an error. That's the sixth error committed by Weld Central. And they've got a runner in scoring position here for the hot hitter today, Caleb Cox. Cox doubled in the first, singled in his second at bat, and grounded out in his third at bat. He's two for three. And the pitch. And he takes it for a strike on the outside corner on the changeup there. It's 0-1. That was pitch number 85 for Dawson Lang. The tying run is in scoring position with one out in the seventh. Three to two, Weld Central. Lang delivers. Swung on, grounded left side. The shortstop, Lacante's got it. He fires to first for the out. Cox is retired. To third is Justin Griffith. It'll be up to Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen steps in with two down here in the seventh inning. Wellen is 0 for 3. He's hit the ball three times to the left side. 
including lining out to left. Pitch from Lang. A strike with a fastball at the knees. So and one. Off of third is Griffith. B diggers could use anything. A wild pitch, an air, a base hit, and the 0-1. Boy, that was just off the plate. And Griffith way down that line. He's trying to and trying to uh, get the the catcher Baumgartner to throw. One ball, one strike. Well in the weights. And the offering. Swung on the balls, chopped the middle, shortstop, Lacante in front of the bag, throws the first and Weld Central wins. On the chopper hit from Wellen to the shortstop, Lacante, Weld Central wins the game by a score of three to two. Let's take a two minute break. We'll wrap it up after this on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Digger Post Game Show is brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Farm and Home Center, your headquarters for your home farm and ranch supplies from plumbing to feed with three locations to serve you, Sterling Brush and Fort Morgan, Mr. D's Ace Farm and Home Center. I'm John Beltran back in Keensburg. The final score today, Wild Central 3 and the Bee Diggers 2. And the line scores as follows, three runs on three hits, six errors for Weld Central. They left seven on base. The Bay Diggers with two runs on five hits, no errors. They stranded seven. The winning pitcher going the distance, Dawson Lang. And the loss in relief went to Jade Queen. Time of the game, one hour and 32 minutes. The Bay Diggers grabbed a one nothing lead in the second inning as Ben Brown hit a ground ball that would be misfielded by the third baseman, Barry, scoring a run. Weld Central countered in the bottom of the fourth inning as Andrew Younger came through with an RBI double tying the game. Then in the fifth inning with two down, nobody on, there was a walk. And then Jimmy Lacante delivered an RBI triple. Then he would score on a wild pitch for a 3-1 to one lead. B-Diggers capitalized in an air to get back into the game, or at least a little bit closer, I should say. They were never out of the game with a run in the sixth inning, but fell just short there with a man on third and two down in the seventh. A bouncer from Nick Wellen fielded by the shortstop, Jimmy Lacante. And he threw out Wellen. That's the way the game ended as Weld Central moved to 4-1 and one, and the B-Diggers fall to 0-3. Oh B-Diggers are back in action coming up on Tuesday at home, their home opener when they take on the Sterling Tigers. And we'll have that game beginning at 4 o'clock. Excellent job as always by our sound engineer and producer, Emily Hernandez. I'm John Beltran wishing you a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. And again, a great happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Gloria. And my good friend Pat, the final score today, Weld Central 3, Brush 2 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com.